Hello Gunpla fans, this is DZ Maven here and it's time again for another Gunpla review. I know I usually review master grades and real grades for the most part, but every now and then I do like to take a look at a high grade kit. Um, but as of late, Bandai's been putting on some actually pretty decent high grade kits lately, especially in, in the first part of this year with the uh, GM Ground Type and the GEP Zeta Gundam. Uh, there were some pretty good ones released the year before, so Bandai's definitely been stepping up their game in the high grade area, so it might be worth taking a look at some of these kits here. So, But there was one that particularly did catch my eye recently, and that is the Barzam. The very weird looking mass produced titans mobile suit but only appeared very briefly at the end of zeta gundam so and yet there was this really weird thing about this year is that this kit was kind of predicted in a way back all the way back in the gundam build fighters there was a box art of it in that show that actually pretty much mirrors almost exactly what the actual box art for this kit turned out to be so I figured that was probably a little bit of an inside joke at Bandai to try and recreate that box art and actually make the Barzam happen, but you know what? Good job, Bandai. You, you you did well there. So, anyway, let's take a look at this kit here. So, here it is. I'll put together and everything for you. I did a little bit of minor detail painting on it just to kind of uh, enhance it a little bit here, like I usually do with my kits here. So, I'm going to get this guy turned around here so you can look at it from all sides here. So... Um, let me get right down to details here. Uh, out of the box here, this thing is actually pretty good looking here for a high grade kit here. Uh, it uses a very minimal amount of stickers on the kit here, and they're really only for some very minor minor color app spots throughout the kit here. Um, if you do want to take it a step further, you can paint some red inside thrusters in areas, especially up in the shoulders here, and these big black thrusters on the legs, and the thrusters on the back of the... Um, uh, backpack will need some red in them. Uh, and the only other thing is probably the gray on the beam rifle here. But really, it's really very minor detail stuff. The rest of it you can fill in with stickers. Uh, the Mono Eye for this kit, um, to my surprise, is actually not a sticker, which is usually what I expect in high grade Universal Century kits. Instead, you actually get a molded clear pink uh, piece for the Mono Eye, which Looks pretty nice here. You might you might want to put some white paint behind it just to kind of light it up just a little bit because it is kind of dark inside the head there. Um, but overall, this thing looks pretty good. I mean, it is a very weird and unorthodox looking design, but it still looks pretty interesting just the way it looks. I mean, doesn't look doesn't look like your typical mobile suit in some ways. It's just if you talk about the history of this design, it's supposed to be based off the Gundam Mark II. It's kind of hard to see, <laughs> besides having the, the Titans color scheme from the Titans version of the Gundam Mark II. But, supposedly it is based on it somehow, but how, I don't really know, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but, because this thing is kind of like almost a bizarro world version of the Gundam Mark II, I guess you want to think of it that way. I guess you could, but, but yeah, this kit is actually pretty good looking, I would say. So, if you just want something that's really good... Uh, straight build, straight out of the box, a good high grade. That's straight out of the box. This thing is pretty good. I'm surprised at how how well it turned out. So it gets a nine out of ten for me in the detail score. So really good. So so let's move on to articulation here, which is actually another thing that actually used to kind of surprise me about this kit. Usually with high grade kits, they don't really have the greatest ranges range of articulation here. They're kind of more about just having a basic look to them. But the Barzam in particular, it's it's actually designed in a way so that it articulates pretty well here. As you can see with the head here, there's pretty good range of motion with the head here. It can almost go all the way around here. And it can look up a little bit here. Not and down. <laughs> down if you need to. Um, as you can see in there, there's a good look at the mono eye that's in there here. Uh, the one downside is the mono eye does not move around. You can't adjust it or anything, so it is fixed in one place. So, just kind of going to have to accept that. But it looks pretty good despite be, despite not being able to move anyway. There's a little bit of detail in there too. So uh, arms here, kind of odd odd looking arms here. You got not quite a 90 degree bend. It's more like a 75 degree bend, I guess, about like that. It will bend up the upper arm like so here. 
and it'll rotate around pretty well here. Now what surprises me is how high the shoulder can go. It can almost go straight up on this kit here. That's like really impressive for a high grade kit here. I mean there are some there are some real grade kits that can't even do that. So I'm I'm cut so color color me impressed here. So and as you move down to the arm here, uh, I do have a really basic high grade hand. It's just on a ball joint socket right there. It moves around pretty well. There's an additional joint in the forearm here that opens up like that. And this is for revealing the beam saber that's kind of held inside this forearm guard here. So uh, this is just a dummy piece that just kind of goes in there, right there, goes inside of there. There's not an actual beam saber in there, so that just kind of stays in there. It's really only for show. Um, you do, well, probably forgot to mention this on the detail part, but there's like a seam line that kind of runs right here. That's really kind of noticeable on this kit, but it's not really a big deal. I mean, you could probably file that down and glue it together and sand it off if you really want to and make that go away. So... But let's get back to articulation here. Uh, the waist and chest here. This is a very strange design for a mobile suit. There's really not a... <clears throat> How should I describe this here? There's not really an actual hip here. That's a, a, a traditional hip design here. It's kind of all incorporated into the chest here. Um, and probably the only thing I can really compare it to are some of the grazes I built from uh, IBO. It's kind of a little bit like that here. As you can see, there is some articulation in here. It can go side to side. It can turn a little bit. It's kind of on a weird swivel. It's kind of hard to describe here, but it, it sits in there. And as you move down to these hips here, there's no skirt armor here, so it's pretty much unhindered at the legs here. So it has some really great range here, including showing with a very nice leg bend there as well. Uh, it can stick the legs out, almost do a complete split here, almost. Uh, I would be a little careful doing this here though, because I have noticed as I've been doing this, there are some stress marks starting to show up down here. So, I just kind of want to be aware of that and not overdo it with this kit, just in case that cracks down there. Um, but down to the feet here, feet, they have an okay range of motion, pretty decent for a high grade. They can bend back pretty far and forward a little bit but they do close up like that there's a two two piece foot here so that is a pretty nice thing to see on a high grade kit so so i think it actually works out pretty nicely on this kit there is an additional thruster here that kind of moves around a little bit right there and moving on to the back these do not move there so they just kind of stay right there where they are so Articulation wise, this guy is actually pretty, again, pretty surprisingly good for a high grade kit. I mean, I haven't really built a high grade kit that has this much articulation to it before. So, um, I was pretty surprised by this here. So, I feel really good about this here. So, it gets a 9 out of 10 for me as well in the articulation area. So, it's looking pretty good so far for the Barzam. So, let's talk about the accessories next year. Now, the accessories is probably the one weak area on this kit here. You really don't get a whole lot with this. You get this really weird beam rifle with this here. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to describe this. It's kind of held off to the side like that. It's not, it's, not, it's not attached to the arm. It's actually attached up here at the shoulder with this little plastic power cable strip here. And it's held by the hand, so... It's, I mean, it, it's on there. It's not going to fall off or anything. It's pretty much on there, but it's just such a weird looking beam rifle design that I don't really know if it's really that effective, but I, I mean, it's on there. It looks okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, you do get a dummy plug. If you, dummy plug for that little power cable that kind of plugs in instead if you want to just have this off, displayed off the bars in for some reason. I mean, you can do that, but... I don't see why you would do that because it's kind of hooked up. It, this is kind of the way it's supposed to be. Um, if you're curious, you can try and hold it the normal way with the fist kind of pointed up, but it looks really, really weird that way. Um, I probably wouldn't try doing it that way. It just looks, looks kind of a little too bizarre for a suit that's already looking kind of bizarre to begin with. Uh, I did mention you there is some painting on this beam rifle you may have to do. Um, most of the detail painting on here is pretty minor and optional in my opinion, but 
uh, the gray here on the beam rifle, you might you might want to consider painting that in because this just comes as all a black piece right here, and missing this little bit of extra color highlight here kind of stands out to me. So if you're gonna paint any details on this kit, I would probably paint the gray on the beam rifle. Everything else you can kind of ignore to your leisure, I guess. It's not really that important, but I just think that kind of helps make the beam rifle look a little better. Uh, besides the beam rifle, we do obviously get some beam sabers. Let me set them back up here. Beam sabers are just beam sabers. There's really nothing to write home about these. They're pretty basic. They just plug right into the closed fist hand, like so, and voila, you have a beam saber. Pretty simple there. Not much to say about that. So, oh, and also before I forget here, because it's on the kit here, you do have this optional Vulcan pod on here. You can take it off if you want. You don't have to have it on there. Um, that's the head without the Vulcan pod here, but it just it just clips on. So it's the same thing as the type of Vulcan pod you see on the Gundam Mark II. It's very very much the same thing, just slightly different design. That's all. Uh, besides that, you do get uh, another set of hands. These are open hands for posing. They are kind of more emotive hands, and they look okay. Yeah, besides the close fist hands and the plug. Uh, that's pretty much it for the extras on this kit. So it's pretty sparse. I, would, I, would, I don't really know what else to expect with the bars in here, but they do seem... But that is basically just it, so... I would probably say extras are probably the weakest point on this kit. So it kind of gets a... This is going to get a 7 out of 10 from me on the extras here. They're okay extras, it's just... They're just kind of blah, basic, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the value of this kit here. Uh, this kit came out in May of 2017, this year, so it's still relatively a pretty new kit here. It retails for 1600 yen, which is going to be about $14 converted to US dollars here. As always, expect to pay a little bit more than that, more than that due to import costs and markups and everything in the U.S. But still, you should be able to get this thing for around twenty dollars, which is about about what I paid for it. So, even at that price, I think this is still a really, really good kit for that price. So, and considering that there really isn't any other kit of the Barzam around, this this is probably your only real option for it. There are some third-party conversion kits out there, but they tend to be a little pricey, and if you're not really into doing extra work for conversion kits, it's probably may not be worth it to you. It's kind of really only for die-hard uh, modelers, so so really the high-grade Universal Century Barzim is probably your only shot if you want a Barzim kit. So, Only other thing I'll probably add about this kit here is that if you do have the high-grade Universal Century revived version of the Gundam Mark II. You can put the backpack of that on the Barzan here. Um, it, it, it is compatible. You just take the old the Barzan backpack off and put the uh, Gundam Mark II one on there and you can have a slightly different looking Barzan if you want. And if you're curious about the real grade Gundam Mark II, uh, the backpack off that will not fit on the Barzan. It, it, it just won't. So <laughs> don't even bother with that. So um, so anyway, uh, value-wise, this thing is actually pretty good. There's, I can't really fault it on anything. It's really the only bars that's out there, and the price is really good. So it gets a straight 10 out of 10 from me on the value score. So I think it's definitely worth picking up if you're e even a little bit curious. Uh, so this brings me to a total of 35 out of 40 for the bars, which makes this a really good kit overall. So like I said before, if you're even a little bit curious about this weird-looking mass-production suit, and pick it up. It's really not that expensive, and it's actually surprisingly really, really good and well built. There's very minor issues about this. Actually, almost no issues about it, unless you're picky about details and seam lines. That's really the only thing you can kind of pick on this kit about. Um, yeah. So anyway, it's a great, great kit. I definitely recommend it. So yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this review here. I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it a little bit informative. If you liked the video, please be sure to leave a like below. And if you have any questions, you can comment down below. And uh, be sure to subscribe because more videos are always coming. Anyway, guys, I hope you uh, have a great day and thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next review. Bye-bye.